Hey everybody, Technoli here, and today we got a good, good, good requested video. Notice we got Sonoma running, and this is a Ryzen system. So I've had a, quite a few people want me to do a video on AMD. So here we go. This is the Asus Tough Gaming. This is the Wi-Fi Plus, so it has built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Really sweet motherboard and is still available, of course. And I have the Ryzen AMD 7 5800X in here. And we're going to run a couple of tests on it to see how good it is in Logic Pro X and also Geekbench 6. So uh, I'm going to show you how to build the EFI and it should work on other systems but you know go at your own pace it will work on this one. I'm going to show you how to build the EFI for this. All right let's get started. All right guys so welcome back to the channel. Um, we have added something new here to the web page since last uh, video. We've got a downloads page so you can grab stuff real quick. And the reason I'm really showing you this is because for this particular motherboard, well, for AMDs in general, I'm going to give you a config.p list that already has the kernel patch in it. Okay, so if we go over to Open Core and uh, we look at the AMD start pages, so we'll just go hit down here to AMD Ryzen. If we scroll down here to Kernel. Can okay, you come down here to Patch? Right here it says Patch, and this is where you have to do. Uh, patching to the uh, config.p list um, and it can be pretty cumbersome and you can make a lot of mistakes. Now, something you will have to change if you do not have an 8-core processor. As you can see right here, there are different numbers that you have to change in the config.p list and they're right here, listed right here if you have like a four core processor or a 12 core, then you need to change your uh, hexadecimal. Like right here, this is an example of the eight core 5800X, which is what I have. And you'll notice in, in this right here, it'll show you which ones you have to change. So make sure you read this in depth, but the patch is already done for you, okay? So, Let's get started on this. Go ahead and close out here. So here is my built EFI for this motherboard. And of course, if you go to my webpage, I should have just showed you that already. You can go right here and purchase EFIs and you can click here to buy it. Um, and you can simply buy it. it's 29 bucks and you're done. Uh, if you want to build it yourself, that's what this video is for. Now also, while I'm right here, if you don't see an EFI listed on my you know, website that you want to purchase, then just request it right here. Just click on here. It'll take you to the uh, contact page and you can let me know what you're looking for and we'll see if we can put something together for you. All right, so enough of that. Um, this Sonoma is pretty cool, guys. By the way, Wi-Fi working. We also have Bluetooth working on this board, which was uh, uh, kind of exciting. <laughs> uh, something that you'll have to do. So let's go back over to Open Core, and um, I just want to have this open on the AMD page in case we need it. Ryzen. Okay, so. Like I was saying, this is completely built. Um, here's the config.p list you're going to get, but you need to add your SSDT here, and you need to add all of these kecks 
to get this to function properly or to at least get it to boot. All right, so all of these kecks right here are needed for this motherboard to boot it to install uh, Sonoma or, or Ventura or Monterey. Um, you're going to need all of these kecks, okay? So you guys know how to get them. You go over here to Gathering Files, and you just go down the line. Like here, this is a Wi-Fi kex. So you click here, and there it is. Your AMD Ryzen CPU Power Management is going to be down here, right here, and so forth until you get all of these kecks, okay? Now, what I would do is, to get started, just go up here to creating the USB and go over to Open Core and download the latest version of Open Core so you have an EFI folder to start with. All right, so let me show you what we got going on here. So I've downloaded it right here. Okay, and here is X64, so here's an EFI. All right, so um, I can rename this to uh, test for right now, okay? I'll put it out on my desktop because I already have my other EFI here. I can't have two files named the same. So we'll go in here, OC, and of course, this is where we have to add these kecks, that, or these SSDTs, and then back here, these kecks right here. They're all going to need to be put in your new Kex folder. All right, then we go over here to Drivers, and you're going to need one more in here. And that is Open Core. Go here to Gathering Files and then Firmware Drivers. You're going to need this HFS Plus and just drop it into here. Okay, so I'll go ahead and grab it. Download it, and I'll just drag and drop it right there. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and copy all these kecks, copy, and put them into here. And here I am assuming that you've gathered these off the Open Core website, and then also off the Open Core website. We have this one right here. We'll grab it and paste it into here. Now, this is where we take the config.p list that we downloaded from my website, okay? And go back to my website. I thought I downloaded it. I guess I didn't. And we will just download it. All right, go ahead and minimize this out because we need a config.plist in here, right? And we'll just drag it and put it into here. Okay, so now we can use our OC auxiliary tools, which you can download from the web I've showed you before. You can just double click on that and we go up here to file, open, and we're going to go to the desktop to our test. OC config.plist and open it up. All right. So it's finding our stuff. It found all of our kecks. Now, this is not here, so I'm going to get rid of it so I don't confuse you guys. Okay. Now, notice it did not pick up, pick up USB inject all. So we're going to click on here and click on Kex and go down to that one and just say OK. All right, so we're making sure that it has the program, Auxiliary Tools, has picked up all of these Kex. All right, looks like it has, so we're good. Now, go ahead and click Save, and then you've got this exclamation. So we want to go under here and say, OK, what's the problem? Platform in, uh, Info, Generic. System ID, ah, 
when I give you this config.p list, it has no serial numbers in it. So you need to come over here, see it's all X'd out, and you need to generate serials and then click save. And now everything is okay. All right. So after this, everything's looking good. I've already added in the Bluetooth fix. So you should not have any problems with Bluetooth. You can use an inexpensive card or you can use a 5,000 or 6,000 graphics card. Right now, look at this, guys. It's still supported. AMD Radeon RX 460, 560. This, my card is a 560 and it's still supported. All right. So we are done. We have done everything that we need to do. Everything's looking good. We've already got our boot args done. So this is the simplest thing you've ever had to build, right? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this one to whatever, old, and then rename this you don't need to do this part. You can just keep it EFI, okay? And then I want to grab my USB stick, and we're going to put this EFI in there and try to boot it up. Okay, got my USB stick. All right, so there's my drive. I'm going to go ahead and use OC, Auxiliary Tools, to mount it. So I'm going to click here, and I'm just going to mount my SanDisk right here. By the way, guys, SanDisk are the best thumb drives to use for Hackintosh. They're faster, so much faster. Now, this one is a 3.2, but even the two 2.0 SanDisk are better than all of the other ones I've ever tested. All right, so there we go. Close that out. Right there is my EFI partition. I'm going to name this one. Rename it to uh, Works, because this is my good one. And we're going to put the new one we just built into here. Okay. Now let's get into the BIOS on this. And uh, very important, the BIOS. If you don't set the BIOS settings right, it'll never boot. So let's go ahead and get in there and see what, see what we need to change. Okay, guys, we're tapping the delete key to get into the BIOS. All right, so this is the easy mode. So you want to press F7 to get to the advanced mode. All right, so let's go over to, to advanced and look at each one of these screens. Okay, this one is extremely important. If you don't disable security device support, you'll never get past a red nag screen when you try to boot. Okay, so got to be disabled. You want everything just like you see it on these screens. You want yours to look the same. Okay. SATA, everything by default here. Onboard devices. Now there's some things we need to look at here. We'll go down here toward the bottom. Want to make sure that our land is on. Our Wi-Fi controller is on. Bluetooth is on. You can leave everything just like it is here. And serial port is disabled. Okay. Right down at the bottom. Clear at the bottom. Easy one to miss. Nothing here to mess with. PCI, we do want above 4G and everything else disabled. USB config, we don't need to change anything else. Let's go over to boot. Boot configuration. Fast boot has to be disabled, and also this wait for F1, if error, disable that. That's another nag screen. And then CSM mode is disabled. Secure boot, got to have it on other OS. You don't want it on Windows, because it'll give you another error. All right, so we're done. Save changes and exit.
let's see if we can boot it. On Asus motherboard, you press F8 to get to a boot menu. Now, if you've got another drive that is bootable, you're going to need to use F8 so you're making sure that you're booting from your USB stick. All right, so I just had to move because the uh, Western Digital is my drive, so I have to boot from the USB. So I go right here. When we come up here, we do install macOS. So with this, guys, I've done all the work for you pretty much. You just have to add all of your everything else in to make sure it works. And uh, make sure you're using the right graphics card and everything. All right. So this is where you'll come down to Disk Utility, Continue. Make sure you check on this to show all the devices. Now, if I was going to install it, I would choose my drive name, not anything here. So you choose the name of your drive. If you have a Kingston, it's going to be the first thing that comes up. If you have a Samsung, it's going to say Samsung. And you click on that, then you erase, okay? All right. So let's go back in and I'll show you real quick that uh, Bluetooth and other things are working on this. This is really a great build and I also want to show you benchmarks. Okay, we're back in. Now guys, uh, you will have to do your USB port mapping after you've installed, okay? And let me show you real quick, after you install and you have your USB ports.kext, let me go ahead and uh, mount this. And you want to go in here and you got to remove USB inject all and put your mapped USB ports here, okay? And get rid of the USB inject all text. Remember, it's right here. Right here. You've got to remove that and then put in your USB ports text that you did after port mapping. Okay? And that way you'll get everything to work, including Bluetooth. So right here we've got Bluetooth. And I've got an Apple keyboard here just want to show you this all right so it's scanning for devices okay and then there is my keyboard I just click connect put in that number that they want me to put in and now there we go my keyboard is connected Bluetooth so that works the Wi-Fi works great uh, we're good to go there. So real quick, let's run Geekbench. And let's run this, and we'll be right back. Okay, guys, we are done. And here's our scores. So we got a single score of 1912 and a multi of 9251. Let's compare that to what's going on. We haven't done this in a while. So let's compare it to a real Mac. We'll open up a new window over here. All right. So 1912, single score. Let's do single scores. 19, so it's between this iMac 27 inch and an M1 MacBook Air. Okay. So good score, good score. Uh, if you look here, we are way above a Mac Pro with a Xeon processor, 28 cores. So pretty amazing, really. All right, let's go over here. Multi-score, 9251. So we'll go back up here. Multi-score, 9251. Right here is 93. All right, so we're again with Mac Pros, okay, which makes a lot of sense. So 
excellent, excellent benchmarks for that and for the money that you're spending on this, which is nothing. All right, now for fun stuff, Logic Pro. What I've got here is a test that is on the web, benchmark test. And it is very cool. So if you're familiar with Logic Pro, if you're familiar with DAWs, um, you know, Pro Tools or uh, Cubase, all of those programs, what we have on every single one of these MIDI channels is right here, a, an instrument. And then we've got EQ, multiplier, a chorus, and filter, and reverb on each track each one of these tracks, okay? And then we've just got a simple limiter on the stereo output, all right? So I'm gonna come down here. I haven't done this test yet. I'm going to assume that this thing can play 99 tracks at the same time with all of those plugins. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to Customize this bar, and I'm going to show you the performance right here. So this is our performance meter. So let's go ahead and play. And with 99 tracks, we're at about 75% of the CPU. The drive is nothing, but of the CPU, okay? So 99 tracks, pretty Pretty darn good. Let's see if we can just max it out. Here's goes up to 128 without adding more. Okay, now we're at 128 tracks and we'll play. And I would say we're at about uh, eight, between 85 and 90 percent. Fan on this on the CPU is starting to spin up a little bit. So that's putting a little pressure on the system. Um, but we're not glitching. We're not uh, having any problems at 128 MIDI tracks with all of these on each channel. So good viable option for a music production. If somebody wants to use this for music production, great little system. So I hope you all enjoyed this video and uh, We've got some really cool videos coming out soon. We're also going to be testing a custom-built computer for less money than the Mac Mini or close to within a couple hundred dollars of a Mac Mini. So why would you build a Hackintosh now when they have Mac Minis for 600 bucks? And I'm going to show you why. Okay? All right, guys, see you on the next video.